to my knowledge, uh, if you look at the von Braun team, um, uh, I'm at, at headquarters, I'm the last one there. Um, I mean, next year, uh, in August 19, in August 2012, it'll be 50 years, and NASA is much older than that. So you can't have any older, older guys <laughs> by force. But I can tell you, those years went by like nothing. I mean, just like yesterday. And uh, when I come to Huntsville and try to, you know, uh, look for the old haunts and uh, corners and so on, most of it is gone, uh, which is sad. I get all nostalgic sometimes when I see, you know, this one restaurant which is still there, 45 years old, a Mexican restaurant, or when I see my house on Montesano, which I still own, it's good rental property. Never sold it because of nostalgia, because I had the greatest years of my life up there. Um, or when I see old friends who are still alive and uh, long retired, or the other day I went out to the cemetery, you know, and uh, most of the old Germans uh, have kind of, they're kind of, uh, you know, clustered in one area. Stuhlinger and Dannenberg and so on and Hüter. Um, that gets me. That really gets me. And here at the conference, uh, have you uh, had some, uh, some friends here that you have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I were two or three. Um, they can barely walk anymore, but uh, they were here. They're still, you know, kind of uh, addicted to space. Uh, uh, some of them are still uh, very bright, only, you know, the body starts failing a little bit. But uh, I saw some two or three guys from Marshall Space Flight Center, from the old team. Um, but all of them uh, from the kind of a second wave. The original ones are, they are just too old. But then they are mostly dead. I don't know who, um, who, who is still living. Dr. Stuhlinger is dead and Heusermann and so on. Um, but those who worked in the 60s with them, who came then joined from American universities or me from German university who came here in 62. Um, I was born in 33, so in 1945, at the end of the uh, Second World War, I was just 12 years old. And when I saw this destruction, around me, all the cities down in rubble. Uh, I asked my grandmother, we came just out of an air raid shelter. Uh, Munich, the city of Munich was burning at the horizon, bright red, and in the, in the sky you still had these Christmas trees, they called them, where uh, airplanes had dropped tracking uh, bombs to show the following bombing planes where to drop their bombs. Uh, I asked my grandmother what, what should become of me, and um, she, she showed me the stars, she gave me a book on astronomy. Um, I realized it has to be a building up type profession, namely an engineer. Buildings have to be built up, bridges have to be built, and so on. So I knew I need to become an engineer. Then I read science fiction, and I wrote science fiction later on in my studies to earn some money, which showed me two things. One is, the future is not predestined. Um, the future is what you make it to be. There are whole, all kinds of futures out there and um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not destiny in that sense that it's predestined and that you are in a rut. You are not in a rut. You can change it. So I said, okay, I decide my own future. And the other thing was that uh, in science fiction you write a lot about space flight and that uh, cleared, uh, make, made it clear to me that you need space flight one day as a very important uh, lever uh, on your on your world to open this closed system, a closed system land, sea, air. Uh, this is really not your total ecology. There is space out there, the fourth domain. But in order to get there, get the energy from there, the resources from there, or put people out there, you need space flight. So this is how I came to the uh, realization: space engineer, engineer in space, and. Then that means I had an autopilot set at that time. And like a straight, uh, straight arrow, through my studies, through my letters to von Braun, through my coming to Huntsville, I followed that like an idiot. I mean, <laughs> straight laced. Uh, there were kind of, you know, some uh, wiggles in between, like, you know, like a drunkard's walk. But basically, uh, the direction was clear. I, I knew it early on that this was my work. And it's not work, really. You know, it's it's a contents of life. It's it's uh, like a hobby, but much much more 
important. Um, it had more bags. Um, family life really isn't really that big. Uh, if you are, con you know, kind of uh, con concentrated on something like that. Uh, we never decided, well in the 60s, uh, I talked with my wife and we said, well it's a little early for children. I couldn't be a father, I couldn't be a real daddy as long as I worked with von Braun on the Apollo program. So we waited, we waited a little bit long, we, we pushed it away and today I have no children. And I will, I'm very sorry, very sorry, I regret that very much. But I have mental type children, I talk to students, I wrote books and so on, so somehow I'm not feeling totally at a loss. And uh, I better know, you know, if anyone really is passionate about something like that, they have to think it over, you know, do they really want to do that? Um, and, and space is, a, is an area where you need to become passionate because there are so many, uh, uh, well, uh, detractors or uh, negative or setbacks, uh, politics doesn't go along for at least four years. <laughs> There's always a hope that the next four years will be better. Uh, when we landed on the moon, we all were firmly under the belief that uh, we are going to stay on the moon. Uh, three more flights after Apollo 17 were cancelled by President Nixon, 18, 19 and 20, were built already. And uh, the plan of extending Apollo, the, we had an Apollo extension system, AES and AAP, Apollo Applications Program, uh, with a little base camp and so on, that all didn't turn out to, uh, to be reality. We had to turn back to Earth and do something about Earth orbit development, space shuttle. Uh, so a lot of dreams and expectations didn't come about and you had to start learning uh, to go swing with those punches and uh, accept it and try to turn it into something positive. Um, there was an old Prussian king, um, Frederick the Great. Uh, the reason they called him great is because he said things like, if you want to achieve great things, you have to accept the fact that you won't be around to benefit from them. But you still have to work for them as if you were still here and take them totally serious. So if anyone comes to me and says, well, I want to fly to Mars and I, you know, I want commercial industry to fly to Mars, but it needs to be in my lifetime, then I say, forget it. You, know, you have to accept the fact that you won't be around anymore, but you have done your part in it. You have you know, passed on the torch. And so we are great passer-owners of torches. <laughs>